All right, your next project is going to be one that is around how to use digital calipers. So the project is basically a training guide on how to master using the digital calipers and how to find the coordinates and redraw shapes on a product. Now, the digital calipers are an awesome tool and I wanna go over how to use the basic functions of the tool. Turn it on, you're gonna come over to the button and push on. Now the first thing you wanna check when you turn on your calipers is that they say millimeters. If they do not say millimeters, go over to the blue button until you see that it says millimeters. The next thing you wanna make sure is you wanna take one finger here and another finger here and squeeze and make sure that it says .00. So for example, let me mess it up. So what I'm gonna do now, this is now incorrect. So every measurement you do right now will not be correct. So what you wanna do is hold the jaws tight and you wanna hit the zero button so that your calipers say zero. Now, there are three ways to measure with the calipers. The first way is I can take my finger and roll on the wheel and it's moving the jaw. Now, what it's measuring right now is the distance from this jaw to this jaw and then again, this jaw to this jaw if it's measuring outside. So for example, my finger. If I move my finger until it closes, I can see that my finger is 16.2 millimeters wide. Now, if I have, for example, a circle, I can come in like this and I can move the jaw out. And this tells me it's perfectly 20 millimeters, which it should be, because that's what I drew it at. So this measures the diameter of a circle or the width inside an object. This is 15 millimeters. So you can see this is how you measure the inside distance. It's a lot easier than having to go like this and figure out exactly where the teeth ends and measure it that way. This way is a little more accurate. The last way to measure um, is this way, this guy. So what you do is it's a depth tool. I put it here and I slide down on the caliper and it tells me that the height is almost six millimeters. So you don't necessarily do that there. You would do it in this scenario right here where you can't get the calipers in. And again, it's about six millimeters high. So what I'm gonna do now is cover how to do this project. So this is, this is an overview how to use this. Oh, one last thing. Please remember to not tighten this really tight. If you do, then you will not be able to move it. So it's, it needs to be just a little loose so that the caliper can move freely. So please double check this if your caliper cannot move. Okay, so the next part of the video, I'm gonna show you how to do this project. So what I did here is I created um, basically a block with different shapes on it for you to practice how to find the coordinates and how to redraw these shapes on Onshape. So for example, let me flip it over. If you want to draw this exactly where it is in this rectangle, I'm gonna show you how to find the X and the Y coordinate to create this point. And once you find that point, you simply measure with the uh, teeth up here, the width, and then you can draw a straight line and on shape, measure right here, draw a straight line down since it's a square or a rectangle. And then basically from then on, you're golden because you could just draw another line this way and make it the same distance and then connect it and you have the shape. What I want you to do is on each one of these, you gotta find this coordinate. Now in engineering, generally speaking, the bottom left corner is where the origin is, where you measure the X and Y. It's really okay if you do it over here and here and here. It's just basically easier for you to get the dimensions. So with that being said, I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is probably have a sheet of paper out um, and I recommend that you actually take a sheet of paper and put it underneath it and then that you trace it. So I'm going to show you what that looks like now. Okay, I've taken a sheet of paper and put it underneath the block. And the reason why I'm doing this is it's easier for you to write down your numbers and visually see where all the dimensions are. So what I do is I come up here and I just kind of trace the block like so. All right, so then I'm just going to come in here and get a nice trace of the shape, like so. Now what I'm gonna do is this really quick. 
I'm gonna come into each shape and then do a quick trace. And there's a reason for this. It's so that you have a place where you can put your numbers and visually see where everything goes. All right, so I'm almost done. I recommend you do this. All right, now I have basically a 2D sketch of the shape. And what I wanna show you today is that this is the X, okay, on the X axis, and this is the Y. So anything that you measure from this direction on the block will be the Y, and anything that you measure in this direction will be the X, okay? Now, if you drew it like this, then the world changes. Obviously, this would be the Y, and this would be the X. Just keep that in mind. But we're gonna draw it like this in the project. Now, the first thing I need to know is how long is that line and how long is this line? So what you do with your calipers is real simple. You come over, make sure that they're on, and make sure that it says zero. And you're gonna take your calipers and you're gonna pull them out. And then what you're gonna do is put them next to your block and measure. So it says 139.75. So, and if I do a couple of readings here, that's about right. And then let's do the other side just to make sure. So yeah, so what I would do then is come over to here and write 139.75. Now I gotta do this line. So it's real easy. All I have to do now is take the jaws and slide them until they stop on this block. Now, it tells me it's pretty much exactly 90 millimeters. So now I know that this line is 90 millimeters. So I come over to here and I write 90 millimeters. Now there's one last thing we need to know and that is the thickness for the extrusion. So what I'm gonna do now is turn the part over, come over like this, and it tells me 5.8 millimeters. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna extrude out 5.8 millimeters. Now that is another important thing. Make sure you put millimeters at the end of each number so you know what your measurement is. All right, so what I would do in Onshape at this time is I would go into Onshape and do the center point uh, rectangle tool or square tool, draw it from the center out, and I would type in 139.75 for this line 90 for this line, but I'm going to teach you something new today. You're not going to extrude right away. That will be the last step, okay, because you don't need to do it. What we're going to do is instead draw these shapes in first and then click on this plate and then it'll extrude everything up and leave these as cutouts. It's a lot easier because there will only be one sketch. You don't need multiple sketches, so just one sketch. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna show you how to find and recreate this, and then I'm gonna show you how to find and recreate this, and then I'm gonna show you how to find and recreate this. So actually, I'm gonna be careful. I don't wanna give you too many answers. So I'll do this one, this one, and this one, and the rest is on you. So what I need for this shape is I need to find this guy right there. So I need the X and Y for it. So what I'll do is come over here and label this as square one, square two, square three. So we'll call this S1, S2, S3. So I'm gonna come over here and go S1, and I'm gonna put X equals and Y equals. So what I need to find is how far over does it go on the X, and that's the X, and how far over does it go down on the Y? So my first step is to take this plate and to find the X, I'm gonna measure with the teeth from here to here. So I simply come here until it stops and it says 10. So all I have to do now is for the X, write 10. And I can come over to this line and write 10. And remember it's 10 millimeters. Now the Y, very simple. I come over like this and I measure and it says 4.75. So all I have to do is write 4.75 millimeters, and I can also put that 4.75 there. 
So now I've got my starting point. What I'll do is like we did in the last project, I'll draw a line on this line straight out to 10, and then I'll draw a line straight down to 4.75, and I have my starting point for my square. Now I need to measure how long is this line and this line. So what I'll do next is I'll come in here and I'll put the teeth inside of it and basically go pull backwards until it stops and I'll do it like this. So it's about 15 millimeters. Now you could do 15.20, but I'm gonna keep it a solid 15, all right? But I want you to practice anyway, so let's just go with what it says. So let's do 15.25 because it's 15.24. So I'll come in here and write 15.24. Now what's this one? Same thing, I turn it like this. 15.24, or basically 25, excuse me. So 15.25, and then this one is 15. 0.25. So if I drew a line out 15.25 and a line down 15.25, then I can just simply do that for this line and that for this line and I have my shape and it's done. So I'll show you that in the video. This one's tricky. Now what you need to do with this one is you need to find out how far over does it go on the X and you got to put a point right here in the middle. So I'm going to measure from here to here. Now the cool part about tracing it is you could use the paper or you could do it like this. So what I'm gonna do is hold my finger on the edge and I'm gonna roll it out to where I think I go to the middle. And when I get to the middle, I think I'm okay. And it looks like this one's 50 millimeters is where the middle is, all right? Same thing, I could come down here on the line where I drew the middle and it's pretty much close to 50 millimeters. So I know the X is 50 millimeters. So this is C1. C2, C3, C4. So I'm gonna come over here and write C1, X, Y. We know the X is 50, the Y we don't know. So I come over to here, and this is the part that's tricky. So you're gonna measure like this. You're gonna get right till you get to the middle. All right, and it looks like it's 12 millimeters. So there we go, so I know the Y is 12 millimeters. Now remember with circles, we wanna find the center. Okay, so we wanna find right here in the center, and it definitely looks like it's 12 millimeters. So what I'm gonna do right now is come over to the Y, and I'm gonna write 12, all right? Now, I'm not gonna do the rest, it's on you. So for every one of these, you wanna find the X. For this X and Y, find the X and Y, find the X and Y, this one's really cool. Find the X and Y, but then measure the distance between here and here, and then whatever this line is, draw it in the program. And then all you have to do is connect these two lines. We don't know what the angle is of these lines. You will never will. But the way to get these angles perfect is you get this starting point, measure the distance on the triangle here, all right, draw a straight line down, and then measure the distance from here to here, and then you can do half the line this way and half the line this way. I'll show you this one just because I wanna make sure you're okay. So what I do on this one is very simple. I can find the Y real quick, and that is 5.7, let's do 5.75. So I know the Y is 5.75. The X, I come over here like this, Measure out the X. So 25 is the X. So I know this is out 25. And then next, I measure the height. And it is, looks like, 19.9. And it was supposed to be 20. Yeah, it's 20 millimeters. So it's 20 millimeters. So this is 20. And this guy is 
29 millimeters. Okay, so then I know this guy is 29. So what I have to do is divide 29 by two and draw the line this way and draw the line this way. So I am now gonna go in on shape and show you how to do the rest. Okay, just keep in mind, you're gonna do a sheet of paper and code it. This is R1, this is T1, T2, T3, this is R2, and these are great ways of remembering what you're measuring and writing it down like this. Remember, this is your start. After you find that starting point, then you find the dimensions and write them on your sheet of paper, and then you can go draw them. So what I'm gonna do now is go into on shape and show you how to do the rest. All right, now that I've done the measurements of some of the parts, what I'm gonna do now is show you the picture um, of the measurements I took and then show you how I'm gonna use this information on this screen and how I'm going to recreate it uh, the right way. So your first step is to go into Onshape and go to Create, and then you wanna to go to Document. You're gonna type in Caliper Project and put your name. So I'm gonna put my last name. And then you're gonna click OK. Now it's gonna create a new document for you to work in and what you're going to want to do is do the same things that I always tell you to do. Your first step is to bring the mouse to the front over here with your uh, arrow and go hover over the eye and left click to get rid of the front. Do the same thing for the right and left click. Then immediately take your mouse to the top of the cube on the right and left click on it so you're looking straight down on the plane. You want to go to the three bars and immediately go to workspace units and change your unit of, me of measurement from inches to millimeters and hit check. Now, like I've been telling you for the last few projects, to draw, you always have to go to sketch, left click, and then left click on this plane. So looking at the picture I drew, this is a rectangle. I found out the X is 139.75 and the Y is 90. So I'm simply gonna come over to the rectangle tool, click on the drop down, go to center point, and then once I do that, I'm gonna bring it to the origin and I'm gonna left click once and not touch any other buttons. And I'm gonna move my mouse slowly to the bottom right and click. Now the bottom number is 139, so I'm typing in the keyboard immediately the numbers. I'm not using the mouse, I hit enter. I'm then gonna type in 90 for the Y and hit enter. Now, normally you would go up to the extrude button and then extrude it and we do a sketch on top of it. Um, but I wanna show you how you could actually stay in one sketch and that makes it easier for you, okay? So I'm gonna right click now, and I'm gonna left click escape the, the rectangle tool. I'm gonna left click on this number and hold it and drag it down so it's out of the way. Now, looking at the drawing, <coughs> the first thing is this square, which is a 15.25 by 15.25. Now, I found out that the X of this point right here all right, is over 10 and down 4.75. So what I do is I come in here to my line tool, I left click on this top dot, and I move over anywhere I want and I left click. I immediately type in 10, because that was the X, and then I go down 4.75 because that's the Y. Now what I have found is exactly that starting corner that you see right here where it was over on the X10, down 4.75 on the Y. What I need to do now is draw a line that's 15.25 this way straight and straight down 15.25. So if I come over to the right and I left click, I type in 15.25, enter. Then I go straight down and you have to see that 90 degree angle um, symbol. You see that 90 degree angle symbol? That's what you want. I left click, 15, type in 15.25, hit enter. Then I can simply just come over here and touch this dot and follow it down and do this. Or I could just draw a line like this and left click and type 15.25 and then connect. I now have that initial shape. So let me go to the next thing in the measurement um, drawing. It says then this circle was over 50 on the X and down 12 on the Y. I believe I measured the width of it as 20 um, in the beginning when I showed you how to use the teeth. 
So I should have wrote down a line going across that said 20. So what I should have done is this. I should have drawn a line like this. And I should have put that line, here we go, right here, like this. And then I should have gone in and wrote the number 20 millimeters, like so. And I should have put that like that. Does that make sense? So coming back over here, it says go over 50 on the X and down 12. So I'm going to go back to my line tool. I'm going to left click on the dot right here. And then I'm going to draw it out over to here. And I'm going to type 50 and hit enter. And then what I'm going to do is go straight down and type 12 and hit enter. Now I know that circle is 20. So I go to the circle tool. I left click on this dot and I type 20. Now I've got my circle. So now I've got the square, I've got the circle, I'm going to move on to the triangle. All right. So please ignore what I said in the previous part and don't delete any of these lines. It will mess up the drawing. So I'm leaving that alone. So going back to my drawing, now I have the triangle. Now what I did differently though, is this time when I did this measurement, I measured from this corner, which is okay. So when I use these numbers, uh, 25 and 5.75. Remember, I did it from this corner. If you do 25 over here, you're going to end up somewhere in here, which is wrong. So <coughs> 25 and 5.75. So I come to the line tool. I draw a line coming out to the left. And I type in 25. Enter. And then I go straight down. 5.75 and hit enter. Now in the drawing, it said the distance straight down was 20. So what I do then is draw a line going straight down and type 20. And then it said that the line was 29 millimeters. So you're going to take 29 millimeters and divide by two. So if I take my calculator and do 29 divided by two, it's 14.5. So all I got to do is draw a line to the right, 14.5. And then all I have to do is right click escape line. Now I could go to the mirror tool, click this line, and I can reflect that line across and I'm good. Then I take the line tool and simply connect these points. And I now have the triangle. Now I right click escape. Now I do advise taking the scissors and getting rid of this line when you're done with it. So you're good. Now I'm going to right click escape the trim. Now look what you got. You've got the shape that I showed you over here, here, and here. What you then do is left click on the face plate and it turns orange and you go extrude. Now the distance for this plate was 5.8 millimeters. So all I got to do is come in here and type in 5.8 and hit enter. 5.8 and hit enter and hit check. And I hold the right button down and look and you can see that I've got this plate going. Now I'm going to leave the rest to you. So you've got to go back in the drawing and find these points. Now remember, you got to find this point, the X, then the Y, and then what you'll do is draw the X line up here, whatever that number is, and then the Y line down, whatever the number is. Measure this line and draw it straight across. Measure this line and draw it straight down. And just keep following. Same thing for here. Measure how far over it goes and measure how far down it goes for the Y. You'll keep repeating. Remember the triangle's different. You find the top part of the triangle, find the distance down, and then you measure the distance here. So when you find this point, the X and the Y, draw the distance down straight, and then divide whatever this distance is by half, and draw half to the right, and reflect the other half over. <coughs> the square. Find the point, the X and Y for these points. And then like you saw me do for this one, repeat it. The circle's the hardest one. You've got to kind of find the middle of your circle. Um, I advise you being patient and measure the X going like this and then measure the Y going down like this. And then you basically take the inside top teeth of your calipers and you go till the edges hit this edge and this edge and that's how big you draw your circle.
All right, the last part of your project is you actually then have to take the shapes um, that are cut out and you're gonna have to redraw them in on shape. So for example, this triangle is real simple. I encourage you to trace it like so. And then this is actually the, the T3 one. It's the third triangle on the block. And then what I want you to do is write down what this number is and what this number is. So if I come over with the digital calipers, what I'm gonna do is take in the calipers like so and squeeze and it says 39.3. So what I'm gonna do here is come over and write 39. I'm gonna leave it um, a solid 39. Well, we'll do 39.25. Okay, I'm just gonna round down to that number. All right, then the next thing I'm gonna do is come over here and measure the top. And that is 34.5 is pretty much what I would do for this one. So this number is 34.5. So all I have to do in on shape is draw a line that goes like this, 39.25. Find the midpoint, draw a line up, 34.5. And then all I have to do is connect and I've made my triangle. Then I need to know what the extrusion is. So what's the thickness? Which should be 5.8 because that's what the um, block was. So if I come in and it's 5.8. So I come over here and I write 5.8. All right, circle, easy. Come over to here, put the circle inside the jaws and it's 29.9. So we're gonna write it like that. So 29, I'll trace the circle. You don't have to trace it if you wanna free draw it. Now this circle is actually the C2, it's the second one down. All right, so the diameter is 29.90, if I'm not mistaken. Let me do it. Whoa, that's 30, hold on. That's why you always gotta double check. So let's do that again. Okay, there we go. 29, so let me just spin it. So 29.75. So I'm gonna erase that. It's always a good thing to double check. So 29.75. Same thing for this one. You would come in, draw it, and I believe this is S1 square one. All right, so this is S1. I gotta find out what the X and Y is. So I come in and measure. The width is 14.7, and this should be similar. It is 14.7. So this one is 14.7, and this is 14.7. So now what I'm going to do is go into on shape and draw these shapes for you so you get an understanding of how to do this. All right, the last step after you've done all the shape cutouts is now you actually have to measure all the shapes and recreate them. So what I want you to do is go down to the plus sign and I want you to do part studio. Now when you do a part studio, we're going to add drawings. I want you to come in and type the actual name for this. So what you're gonna do is come down to where it says Part Studio 2 with your mouse, right click and say rename, and we're gonna call this the square shapes, okay? And then hit enter. Now what you're gonna do is draw the three square shapes on this uh, drawing. What you'll do is go to the plus sign again, create Part Studio, you'll right click on the name and rename it, and you'll call this the circle shapes, okay? Now the cool thing about doing drawings within drawings is you don't need to go to the units and change it because it stays. But you still want to go to the front and hide it and the right and hide it and look at the top down. So let's take a look at the square shapes. I measured one square as 14.7 by 14.7. That's easy. I go sketch, left click on the uh, plane, go to center point, left click and drag out and I type 14.7, enter. 14.7 and enter. And then what I would do is then go extrude 5.8. But there are other ones. 
So what you can do is actually come above like this or below. And notice if I just touch the origin and don't push anything, I can trace straight down. And then I would click right here and draw the next one. Let's pretend the next one is 20 by 20. I'm making this up. This one is right. This is totally made up. Then I would go to extrude. And I know the thickness is 5.8. So I come over to here and I type 5.8 and I hit enter and check. So now I have example of the square piece. I'm going to do the, the circle shape is really easy. All you do is very simply um, take a look right here. Sketch, click on the face. You just go to your circle tool, draw it out, type whatever that number is. That circle was 29.7, so I type 29.75. There it is. Now, I'm going to do the triangle one. There's also a rectangle one. So you're going to right click and rename it, and you're going to type in triangle shapes. Okay, enter. And then the triangle one is a little more complicated. That's why I'm going to show you how to do it. Sketch, click on the face. So the first thing you do is actually you left click on this line and draw it out. And that first line is 39.25. So you're just going to type in 39.25. Then you're going to go back to the middle and find the midpoint. And you're going to left click on that midpoint and draw straight up. There we go. And that's going to be uh, 34.5. So then I type 34.5. I put 6. So let me right click escape line. I can double click on there and type 34.5. And then all you do then is draw a line down to here. Draw a line down to here. And I have the triangle. You would just repeat the step down here by simply drawing a straight line and typing in whatever the number is, find the midpoint, and then go up on the midpoint and type whatever that is. This is totally made up. I'm making this up, so please don't do this. And then you would go extrude, and then you would type in 5.8 millimeters. <coughs> so, check. You need to have what I have on my screen. So I want make sure I want to make sure you got that. All right, you need to have this, which is the block. So we're going to rename this shape block. Okay, and you need to have the square shapes, the circle shapes, the triangle shapes, and the rectangle shapes. All right, and I should have said shapes right there, and then you're done.